Assetto Corsa Competizione is the exclusively GT3 focused offshoot of the fan favorite mod friendly Assetto Corsa. That darling of the PC racing simulator community was ported to console back in 2016 to mixed results. Competizione though in most ways is a vastly better racer than its broader progenitor. There's night racing, there's dynamic weather, and the AI is leaps and bounds more civilized and capable of battling fair and yielding corners. The problem is the console version's performance and control issues make it seem like it wasn't quite ready to be released yet. There are no doubt fans out there that will regard the contraction in total content between the original Assetto Corsa and ACC disappointing because scaling down to a single racing discipline means ACC admittedly sheds lots of surplus rides and racetracks. However, I think ACC's laser-like focus on a single underrepresented school of virtual racing is quite brilliant. Endurance racing is a fantastic challenge and while it requires long stretches of unbroken focus and rapid reflexes, when you get into a consistent rhythm, there's an almost meditative quality to it. ACC understands this and includes an official selection of some of the world's most respected circuits and scores of racing opportunities. Quick championships, long championships, a career mode. Welcome to the career mode of Assetto Corsa Competizione. And a host of fully customizable custom events. Multiplayer is obviously supported, but custom lobbies aren't available at launch and the game hasn't let me into a single quick public race yet. The arsenal of exotic GT3 steeds on hand may be slim compared to some of ACC's racing peers, but they're very distinct from each other in terms of handling characteristics, and they sound absolutely astonishing. The audio is a huge highlight overall, from the raw mechanical squeaks and shrieks over the wicked exhaust tones, to the bespoke track announcers in the background at each circuit. Unfortunately, there are a few complications. Like the PC version, the Xbox One and PS4 versions of ACC run at 30 frames per second, even on the One X and the Pro. That fact alone is not a sore point necessarily, hugely successful console races like Drive Club and Forza Horizon 4 also run at 30 frames per second, and they're amongst some of the most visually accomplished racing games of their generation. The key point of difference is those games have rigidly locked frame rates, while ACC seems to flutter. The result is a slightly uneven appearance that obviously lacks the silkiness of the PC version, but also misses the consistency of other console races, whether they run at 60 frames per second or at Loctite 30. This is when I was playing on Xbox One X too, not the standard launch consoles. Oddly enough, beyond the occasional temporary freeze on track, the frame rate seems at its worst in the menu screens. It's less of an issue, but it's very noticeable that the steering animation has a tendency to appear wildly erratic when driving aggressively using a gamepad. The rotations seem like they're matched to stick position rather than how fast a human could realistically twist a wheel. It makes the full cabin view and the otherwise well-positioned helmet cam a bit of a bust for pad users. So in these instances, I found myself sticking with the more zoomed-in dash view, which crops out the steering wheel entirely. The pad controls are otherwise pretty well-tuned. They're a little devilish before the tires come up to temperature, but I had some great races and battles playing this way. The Blunt Paint series represented in ACC allows factory traction control and ABS, which I tend to find useful playing racing sims with giant hands on tiny triggers anyway, and that helps make the pad controls less daunting. You just need a delicate touch on turn-in as the steering is quite sensitive on the stick. ACC is, of course, aimed at racing enthusiasts and we're the type who wouldn't be caught without a steering wheel anyway. That makes you immune to those weird driver arm display quirks. However, getting it working in the first place was bafflingly cumbersome. Our Thrustmaster TSXW racer wasn't even properly detected at first, and then the buttons worked, but not the pedals. And after a bunch of apparently fruitless fiddling in the control assignment menus and a pair of restarts, I eventually got it running by turning the wheel off and on again, but then my maximum rotation switched to just 40 degrees. That's utterly undrivable. Helpfully, it can be manually adjusted through the pause menu without quitting the track, but it's a dumb problem to have considering it's clearly built to be played this way. After finding a suitable wheel rotation angle, force feedback on the TSXW seemed surprisingly flaccid at first. And that was odd considering how impeccable the driving experience is in the console port of the original Assetto Corsa, but that of course has its own problems. I've improved it via some finagled settings, but it's still probably a bit lighter than I'd like. 
Regardless of whether you're using a wheel or a pad, I can't personally recommend the Chase camera. It's rather stiff, so the moment you get any kind of oversteer, the camera yours instantly, exaggerating even minor slip and regularly turning small losses of control into total tank slappers. Chase game isn't my preference in racing sims at the best of times, but I found this one extra challenging due to those factors. Also, regardless of whether you're using a wheel or a pad, don't bother with manual options for things like the pit limiter or lights or wipers and such. There are already a billion more things to map functionality to than you'll have buttons. We're not working with keyboards here. When going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some evenly matched AI as the sun sets through the trees, Assetto Corsa Competizione's console version settles into a pretty satisfying groove. There's a very positive emphasis on consistency and racecraft here, and the deep driver rating system is very granular and appraises every move you make. The spotter functionality that calls out opponents within close proximity is also worth a late mention and contributes to some good, clean racing. However, its uneven frame rate and appearance, combined with the controller settings debacle, suggests to me that only the most serious endurance racing stalwarts will stick it out. For more on racing, check out our recent previews for F1 2020 and Dirt 5. For everything else, stay on IGN. We're happy to present IGN's Summer of Gaming, featuring the latest and greatest in game reveals, news, trailers, next-gen coverage, and more. Our month-long event features our first-ever series of IGN Expos, where you'll get first looks at world premiere game trailers, exclusive game demos, and interviews you won't find anywhere else. IGN's Summer of Gaming, only on IGN and IGN One on Samsung TV+.